The body is not as good as I'd like it to be. <laughs> So when I got back from Ibiza, I went and got an MRI scan on my calf just because I wanted to know exactly what was going on. And it was a kind of win-win situation of I'd either see that there was something on the scan and then be able to do something about it or see that there was nothing on the scan and then kind of say, okay, if there's nothing body-wise going on, there's something else. In my head, I kind of wanted it to be something on the scan because I felt at least then it's easy, it's something we've identified, you can then have this path to recovery. Whereas if it's not anything that's showing up like in the muscle, then it was a gonna have to go do more investigations and work stuff out. So yeah, the MRI came back with it basically being like a muscle edema in my soleus with a bit of central tendon involvement, which basically explains why it was kind of getting a bit better and then getting bad again and kind of doing that. Basically with tendon involvement you have to be pretty careful because if you irritate it too much you can kind of rip the whole muscle off the tendon and like do some pretty serious damage so yeah annoying from a like it's not worst case scenario but it's kind of definitely not best case of it just being like a little tear so definitely a bit of a longer road to recovery in terms of really letting the tendon settle down, really trying to look at everything else around it, strengthening other bits up. I had a good session with a new physio to kind of look at what are some of the contributing factors to why I keep getting sort of calf, Achilles issues. Cause I think that's been one of my frustrations that I've been doing all this stuff in the gym. Like I'm in the gym pretty much twice a week, all the time doing lots of, Achilles, calf, everything else stuff. And it was actually really interesting because he, <laughs> one of the first things he was looking at was like my ankles. Basically my right ankle ligaments don't really do anything. So he could just basically just keep pushing my foot round and round. So because then the ligaments aren't really holding the joint in place, all the calf muscles are having to overwork quite a lot. So that's one of the factors. And that basically comes from, I think, a bit of hockey, rolling my ankle quite a lot in hockey and then continuing to roll my ankle a lot every time I go to my parents in the Lake District <laughs> and pretend that I can fell run. So <laughs> yeah, I kind of knew my ligaments weren't great, but I guess I probably didn't realise they were that bad. And then he also looked at, there's some other like slight imbalances with some of my other muscles. So my right tib and is not quite as strong. So again, that's something else that, because that's a bit weaker, my soleus is probably working harder to compensate. And I think it's also my left hamstring or one of the muscles maybe on the hamstring was also not quite as strong. So there's like a few different things going on. So now that we've identified that, that's basically my gym program now. So I'm gonna spend probably the next month trying to do maybe three sessions a week of mainly some of this rehab stuff along with the more normal stuff. Cause again, I don't want to let like the glutes and the upper body stuff go out the window. Like I said, like positive from a, we think we found some good reasons as to why it keeps happening. And there's like a relatively clear path to recovery, I guess, from generally with calf tears, you get different grades and you can kind of plot out the weeks of what it takes. So I've got like the next few weeks to kind of see how's that progressing, can I kind of return to running, see how that goes. But I think generally I'm having to be quite cautious at this point because the risk of, like I said, with tendon involvement, the risk of overdoing it a bit early and then actually just writing myself off for the rest of the season is quite high. Lots of things to kind of weigh up. Not the end of the world, it gives me more time to focus on swimming, biking, rehab stuff, which hopefully then gives me like a really solid base for, like end of the year races and yeah you know hopefully i'll be at a point where actually it all progresses well and i can be on that roth start line but we'll see because four and a half weeks doesn't 
doesn't seem like that long. So I've got a whole variety of, I've got some specific ankle strengthening exercises, which is quite a lot of that is also looking at kind of the foot and some of the foot muscles and trying to strengthen those. So it's a lot of single leg work, some stuff with weights and a lot of it basically trying to like off balance. So you're then using the foot and the ankle to stabilize yourself. Some of it is then around sort of hip flexor strength as well. Cause I think that was another area that like my hip flexors get tight, but they're not that strong. <laughs> so I've got quite a lot of exercises around that. I've only done one round of this, which is why I don't know that much about it yet. Yeah, so there's balance, ankle stability, and then hip flexor conditioning. So yeah, the overall balance, I guess, is the trying to get the sort of foot ankle working better and some of those other muscles. The ankle stability is the specific, let's try and work some of the other little muscles that hold it all in, seeing as my ligaments don't seem to want to do that. And then yeah, the hip flexor stuff to work on some of the other chain. And then I'm basically integrating, so I have bits of that that I can do at home, that I, is part of my now day-to-day -day routine uh, on day two. <laughs> And then some of it is more in the gym because it needs like weights and then I'm integrating that with my general strength routine with Dane. I've been quite comfortable continuing to swim and bike because I haven't really felt it at all. It obviously depends on the severity of your calf tear and I think, or whatever it is you've got going on. I think had I been able to feel it swimming or biking, I would have probably backed off a bit. When I initially felt the tightness like 10 weeks ago, I did have sort of three days of no cycling. So I think it is good to have that initial, let everything settle a bit and calm down and not overstress stuff. But again, it kind of depends a bit of what actual issue you've got. Swimming, again, like, tamp like pushing off the wall, it I don't seem to feel it. If it was something I could feel, I would be trying to make sure that I couldn't. Because I think, again, one of the things that I'm trying to avoid at the moment, because it's got tendon involvement is, sort of putting it into that flex sort of position and kind of stretching it. Cause I think basically with tendons, you want to avoid stretching them until they're strong again. So that would be a, if I could feel it pushing off the wall, I would not do that. But yeah, I think a lot of it is a kind of, depends what you can feel, how much you can feel it, kind of a bit of a common sense approach of just don't do stuff that feels like it's, pushing it too far. This first phase is all about settling it down and then getting to a point where I can reintroduce a bit of running. And the initial introducing running will be very much like on the lever, on that like offloading a lot of weight and just probably doing very much like jog walk, kind of slowly, slowly, kind of just trying to build back some of that actual running motion and some of the strength whilst running but I'd need to get to a point of having settled it down and kind of building up some of the muscles around it first. 